We are Catholic, and in the town I live there was a Catholic church that kept its doors open 24 hours so people could go and pray. A little after 2.15 a.m. we were walking and decided to go in. We entered the church through the front and made our way to the stairs facing the altar. We knelt on the stairs and began praying. After about five minutes, I heard the side door to my right slam shut. In a quiet church at 2.30 a.m., this is super loud. We both spun in that direction and saw nothing. Before we could speak, the distinct sound of running footsteps emanated from the front of the side door, then made their way towards the front entrance behind us. It was so quiet otherwise we could follow the sound with our eyes. The footsteps ran past the front entrance. If they were human, it would be on their left, to the stairs that lay to our right as we faced the front. They ascended the stairs, and all sound ceased. We looked at each other, dumbfounded, unsure of what to say. Suddenly, the church bells began to ring, and instinctively I looked at my watch. It was 2.30. Breaking our silence, I remarked that they must always ring at 2.30, and I had never noticed before. We sat there for maybe 90 seconds, discussing what had just happened, when suddenly two police officers walked into the church. The police station is two buildings down from the church. One of the officers asked if we had rung the bells. No, I replied. We were praying. If we had, we wouldn't even had time to make it back to the altar before you got here. He realized that was true, and the two officers walked to the stairs and climbed them. My girlfriend and I sat, waiting for them. After maybe about two minutes they came back down, announcing that not only had they not seen anyone, but that the doors leading to the bells were padlocked from the outside. Did you guys see anyone? The same officer asked. These bells never ring at 2.30. We both replied we hadn't. I wasn't going to mention ghostly footsteps, and they thanked us, told us to be careful, and left. To this day I have no idea what we heard, but we were both there, and we remember it happening the exact same way. I was about 11 or 12 years old and it was early Saturday afternoon, I'm 28 now. I remember quite vividly that my parents were having an argument and went to the other side of the house to argue behind their closed bedroom door. Waiting for them to come out, I hadn't yet brushed my teeth that morning so I went into the bathroom to do so. After I finished brushing, I suddenly had this strange, terrifying feeling like something was standing behind me. I saw nothing in the mirror, but when I turned around, there, just a few feet in front of me, was some type of dark, terrifying figure standing roughly three feet in front of me in my bathroom doorway. It was dark and shadowy, almost transparent, and looked almost like a Dementor like from Harry Potter, except it had glowing red eyes that froze in place. It was at least six and a half feet tall, as its head was taller than the door frame. It was also wearing a dark, shadowy, tall-looking hat on its head. I desperately tried to scream, but no sound would come out. Then, it reached its dark shadowy hand towards me and began closing in. Its hand was terrifying and inhuman. It literally had long horror movie-esque fingers. I was frozen in place, unable to scream, and thinking my life was just about to end in a crazily horrific way when it literally just disappeared in front of my eyes. I ran to my parents' room screaming and crying, but my parents still to this day never believed me. They still live in the same house to this day, and it creeps the hell out of me. I slept with the lights on for weeks. I was afraid to turn my back on anything. I still feel uneasy sometimes when I think about it. I spent hours doing research online throughout the years, trying to figure out what happened or what that was and if anyone else had a similar experience. My heart stopped when I eventually came across an image of the Shadow Hat Man. The Shadow Hat Man 
without a doubt, was what I saw that day. I have no idea what it wanted, and I've never seen it since, knock on wood. But I'll swear on my family's life that this was an actual event that actually happened to me, and it still creeps the hell out of me over a decade later. I guess I do have a faint belief in these things, but honestly never thought of mediums as real. I went to one last night with some friends as a night out and I feel I have to share what happened and if anyone has any input. Before I even sit down in the booth with the lady doing my reading, she said, Your dad passed away, right? He has. I am not at the age where one would make an assumption that my parents are deceased. He died when I was in my late teens. She goes on to call certain things, like the fact that it was a short illness that could have been diagnosed sooner, that he wanted me to know that he was happy it happened that way. He didn't want prolonging treatments causing suffering. She mentioned that I had his bag, and he was happy for that. I do, but not with me in the room. She mentions a pianist, being my grandfather, and then goes back to my father talking about his last moments in eerie detail, like who was in the room and who just missed him, and how his mum collected him from the hospital. He mentioned me changing my hair a lot, it was a running joke between us, talked about trips we would do, stressing to remember the good times. She even mentioned some details that I was unsure of but have since confirmed, who was in the room when he passed. She then talked about my grandmother, who passed very recently, said I was a good person which is pretty much verbatim what she would say to me every time we talked, and that I was wearing her necklace. I had my coat buttoned up and the medium could not see this. The final thing that is really freaky to me is that she told me my dad has a child where he is, a small baby. She asked me if my mom had a miscarriage or an abortion because my dad says it is his. I tell her no and that it's probably a mistake, maybe it's my sister's. She reiterates that no, he says it's his child. I give up, chalking it up to nonsense, but I had to check. So I called my mom and she started crying. Early on, her and my dad had an abortion and they never told anyone about it. I still don't know what to think. I don't think you can read that much about someone by just looking at them. But, I am so happy that I went. Ever since I was little I've seen shadow people, mainly from the corner of my eye and occasionally seen bolting from one shadowy area to the next. I grew used to it, as it seemed every house we lived in had some sort of odd things occurring in it. I'm 29 now and recently moved to a new home with both my mother and young son. I was having trouble sleeping since we had just moved in and for the life of me I just could not sleep. I felt unsettled. I'm not very good with describing things so please bear with me on this. The curtains were open in the room and there was a decent amount of light shining through courtesy of a nearby street light. I closed my eyes in a half-assed attempt to force myself to sleep. It didn't work, my brain just wouldn't shut up. When I opened them a few scant minutes later, I got hit with the most frightening sensation of fear and dread. My heart rate shot up and my breathing rate increased. I guess my fight or flight instinct was triggered. I glanced around the room trying to calm myself down. Now I currently had my son sleeping next to me. He's still at that age where he sometimes doesn't like to sleep by himself and I'll let him fall asleep next to me. He was next to the wall with me between him and the edge of the bed. I also keep a large hunting knife near my bed because I'm a little bit paranoid and have a constant fear that someone will break into the house. So I was quietly still freaking out from an unknown sense of anxiety, looking around the room in an attempt to chill myself out and relax. I then saw a shadow person. It literally looked like a person wearing one of those black bodysuits, a morph suit I think. 
The body looked completely fleshed out and not flat like a normal shadow. Its head easily grazed the top of the door frame. I don't know how, but I knew that it was staring me down. It's one thing for me to be afraid of something, but it's an entirely different thing for it to involve my son. Especially with us by ourselves since my mother was working the night shift. In a split second, I switched from flighty panic to full-blown enraged mother about to murder someone for breaking into our home. That's literally how solid this thing appeared to me. I thought someone had actually broken in. Well, I snarled. Get the fuck away from my son. Grab my knife, and right when my feet hit the floor, this thing bolted. I chased it through the house and straight into my mother's empty room. In hindsight, I'm super glad my mother wasn't home, because I doubt she'd appreciate me tearing into her room, knife up, ready, and yelling, Someone's gonna die tonight. Cheesy, yes, but I was absolutely pissed. Whatever it was vanished into my mother's room. Her closets were shut and only one of them didn't have moving boxes in front of them. It was just gone. Throughout the whole encounter I was able to move. I never fell asleep, nor did I even sufficiently relax enough to slip into a sleepy mindset. I'm a chronic insomniac and sleep has never come easy to me. I don't believe this was a hag attack or a hallucination. I was not drunk, nor do I drink. No drugs, illicit prescribed or over the counter. It wasn't the last time I saw it either. The next couple of encounters I had with it were far less pleasant than even this. The only positive thing is that it leaves my son alone now. He's never seen it and so far keeps its distance. And for that, I am incredibly grateful. as my daughter and I were leaving my father's house, she did something that I will never forget. It doesn't help that this was not an isolated incident, although it was the first. That evening I was carrying her to my car. I had just reached the back door when she gripped my arm hard enough to hurt slightly and said, Daddy, what's that? While staring across the street into the dark lot beyond. I immediately went on high alert but couldn't see anything but a dark house and the dark outline of cars under the garage. I was about to tell her it's nothing when she gripped my arm harder and her words gave me chills. She said very quickly, Daddy, that's a scary ghost and it's coming closer, please let's go. I didn't even know she knew what the word ghost meant or that she even knew the word at all. It was obvious she was very frightened, which in turn made me nervous. I quickly strapped her in and hurried to my own seat and closed the door. She continued to glance over her shoulder and didn't calm down until we were gone from that neighborhood. I figured it may have been her imagination, but I did some research and that you never tell your child nothing is there. It's better to say ignore them or they can't hurt you. There have been more instances during the past few years. She's almost five now but nothing that so visibly frightened her. Although I saw nothing, I still felt as though we were not alone. I felt as if though we were being watched by something less than kind. Maybe it was her fear that put me on edge, but the feeling was beyond anything I've ever felt. I come from Britain, in a small little town that's pretty much bang in the middle of rural Scotland. Anyway, as you may or may not know, Scotland is known to be a foggy and quite rainy place, so I wasn't surprised to see a deep fog as me and my girlfriend drove through the middle of a miniature valley, so hills on either side, pretty secluded. Nobody in sight, and it was around 6pm, so little light left. As we drove, my girlfriend checked her phone to see the time, 6.03 exactly, and said we should get home. The drive had taken roughly one hour driving pretty much straight the whole way to get where we were, so you can probably understand our surprise when after about 10 minutes of pure fog and rain, 
The fog literally just seemed to lift and disappear, and the rain immediately stopped. We were right in front of her house. The car was still running, and the digital clock on it wasn't the dashboard anymore. We both recognized that we had only taken 10 minutes, as we had only listened to a couple of songs that lasted max 5 minutes each, so when my girlfriend checked her phone, which had now turned off on its own, despite having 90% battery left, it was 10.05 p.m. exactly. So we had gone for more than four hours on a drive that should have taken one hour, but only lasted two songs, aka ten minutes. What the fuck happened? This happened around June or July of 2007, I believe. I was around 17 years old and more cocky then, but still somewhat knowledgeable of the outdoors. My family used to own a cabin in northwest Wisconsin. I basically grew up there in the summer. I knew the woods well, but at night it was wise to stay in the cabin or at least by the bonfire by the beach because bears, wolves, and cougars roamed about. One of the creepiest things was if you were having a bonfire, the tree line was visible from the fire pit and beach, and at night you always felt like you were being watched from that tree line. But during the day, the woods always seemed normal, not so creepy. That is, until this incident. So this happened somewhere between noon and 2pm. Me and my cousin were having an airsoft battle. I was in full woodland camo, he was not. I retreated onto the ATV trail into the woods for a tactical advantage and our battle took us about 200 meters into about a third of the way up the trail. We had had enough at this point and were standing at the edge of a clearing on the trail talking and he was maybe 10 feet from me when I decided to mess with him. I shushed him and said, We're being watched. He froze. Then I realized the woods were dead quiet and I got spooked and started scanning the tree line in the other edge of the clearing from left to right when I saw it. Its teeth gave it away. It was panting and staring at my cousin. I don't expect you to believe me, but what I saw was a wolf as big as a black bear, at least 300 pounds. But it wasn't normal. This wolf was on two legs, crouching next to a tree with its arms grasping the tree grasping with a claw hand, it had reddish brown fur. I told my cousin that we have to go, and the next thing I know he is sprinting. I looked back at Wolfie, who had locked on and sprinted a few steps on two feet, and then I turned and ran when it looked like Wolfie was dropping down to all fours. It charged us, and sounded like it was right on our asses barreling through the brush, but for whatever reason let us go when we broke out of the tree line and headed for the cabin. What stuck with me the most was the sheer size. Wolfie appeared to be nearly seven feet tall when upright, and where it should have had front paws, it appeared to have large clawed hands. Now I'm not sure how to explain it away rationally. I've heard wolves will occasionally kind of walk upright, but as far as I know they can't sprint on two legs nor do wolves get that big, and black bears, they waddle on two legs. The closest description I can get is silly, but I can only describe it as a dogman or werewolf. A while ago I wrote about my own experience. This time I'm going to tell you the story my grandma told me. Five years ago there was a death of a young girl in her village. The village is pretty small so everyone knows each other. After the funeral sometime later my grandmother kept having this dream of the young girl appearing before her as a normal person would, but her feet were all scratched and bloody. She would only say that she couldn't find her shoes and she would start crying asking for shoes my grandma would have this dream for two or three days, so one day she decided she would go to the girl's family and tell them to buy shoes and leave them somewhere aside in their home. She didn't really want to worry them, but decided that they should know of the dreams 
and that she's been seeing their daughter with bloody feet crying that she can't find her shoes and she can't walk. The next day her family went and bought her nice white shoes and just placed them in some place at their home. After that my grandma says that she stopped dreaming of the girl, but one night she had a dream about her again. This time the girl was happy. She didn't say anything but grandma says she could tell that the girl was happy and that she could walk again and that was it. She never had a dream about her again. And I really think that this is all possible that we can communicate with the dead while we're asleep. The reason I think this is possible is because a year ago, a really close person to our family died in a car accident, leaving two children behind and a wife. When we gathered one time, my mother's cousin said she had a dream about him in which he looked horrible. His hands were all bloody, he looked worried, hurt, his clothes were torn, he was trying to give her money and said that she was helping his family and wanted her to have the money. They all thought that he looked like that because after the accident, his family decided to move to a different city to get a new home, and to start living there maybe he got worried that they were selling everything and leaving stuff behind. Maybe he had become worried about his children, that they had moved from the home they had had before. She said she couldn't take the money because she was just sitting there observing him, even if she tried, she couldn't, because he looked incredibly distant. This is my first ever experience with evil spirits. Fortunately or unfortunately, I experienced something which is beyond our reach. I'm from Bangalore and this incident happened to me in January 2016 in Karnataka, India. One of my cousins owns an estate in Shimoga, Karnataka. The estate is located adjacent to the backwaters. I planned to visit their estate which I do very often, but I never had any hint about what I was about to experience. I have a best companion of my life which is a German shepherd named Kana and my habit is to take my German Shepherd with me wherever I go. So myself and Kana drove to the estate and had arrived by 3 p.m. The day passed and in night we all had dinner together. After dinner, I took Kana for a walk near the backwater region around 10 p.m. All of a sudden, Kana started barking in a very strange tone which I had never heard before and looking in one particular direction which amazed me. Then he started pulling me forcibly. I didn't understand what was going on though. Later, all of a sudden I sensed some weird things happening and I felt someone is running and coming towards me from the backside, the direction in which Kana was looking at and barking. Then I clearly felt someone pushing hard on my back, causing me to fall, which was incredibly painful. After this, Kana became very aggressive and looked like he was chasing away something with his barking. He started pulling me even harder, and we ran from there and reached the estate. I had told what had happened there to my cousin, and even they were shocked to hear this incident. My back was still in pain due to the fall. Later when I checked, I had red marks on my back, and the pain lasted for weeks. Thankfully, we both managed to get out of there okay thanks to my dog Kana. I often pondered if dogs do have the ability to see spirits. In my case, this is true. My family consists of five members, I, my parents, my two elder brothers. So for a few years we lived in a village called Kagaznagar near the Adilabad district. We lived there due to my father's transfer to the local paper mill. My whole family is very spiritual and believes in ghosts. It was 2001, I was not yet born, and my elder brother who experienced this was in ninth grade. The village was a quite remote village, everyone knew each other. It was the month of Ramadan and my mother had just made some delicious food and told my brother to go ahead and give it to our neighborhood. So. My brother was standing out near our gate. 
when suddenly he saw some men who were dressed in white outfits a distance away playing on the road, levitating above the ground. Suddenly, one of them turned towards him and started laughing a hideous laugh and came running towards him. He started to run in a panic and upon turning back, there was no one. My mother came out to see what the commotion was about, finding my brother sweating profusely and then fainting. The next morning he woke up suffering from a high fever and fortunately never saw them again. He was scared for months and whenever he would leave the house he would hold my father's hand. My mom claimed it was related to the accidents at the paper mill and that those were gins. And apparently these gins were sighted by many villagers in the area. I live in Cheshire, England, UK with my parents. I'm a teenage girl who loves many things, one of them being ghost stories and ghost hunting. It's been a long time since I posted a story, but I wanted to share an experience that happened to me and my mother the other day. We were in our neighborhood town, shopping for some general stuff that we needed. After we had gotten everything, we decided that we wanted to go to the town library. The library is really old. I can't tell you how old exactly, but it's been there for a good 100 years at least. It's got a quite a bit of history. We had no real reason to go there. We only wanted to go because we knew that our favorite library staff were on duty that day and we wanted to drop by for a chat. Side note, these library staff know that me and my mother love the paranormal and they always love to catch up with us to see any new ghostly evidence we have or any new scary experiences that have happened to us. Considering this fact, we were very eager to go to the library, not only to talk about ghosts but just to see our friends. So we pull up to the library around 2pm and we parked around back. The back of the library has a small set of steps that lead up to a back door entrance but are never used. It's been years since that door has been opened, even the staff use the front entrance to get in and out. We could see the steps to the back door as we got out of the car. My mom was in front of me as I was lagging behind being the smaller one. We were walking to the front entrance so we had to pass the back stairs to get there. As we were coming to the bottom of the back stairs, we saw a lady coming in the opposite direction. She had short white hair, a black coat, and was carrying a black bag in her left hand. The lady reached the bottom of the stairs and began to climb them just as I walked past. My first thought was, oh, she's just going to use that door instead, and I brushed it off. About two seconds later, I realized, what on earth was she doing? Nobody uses that door ever. How was she expecting to get in? I turned around to face the stairs again to see how this would play out, but when I turned, she wasn't there anymore. I stood, staring in awe for approximately 10 seconds until my mom realized I had stopped walking. She turned and asked what I was looking at, and I only managed to utter the words, Did you see that? Before my mom finished the sentence for me. She'd seen the same lady, Apart from that, she hadn't seen her start to climb the stairs because she was in front of me. My mom had brushed it off like I had until I'd stopped and thought about it. At this point, we were both staring at the back door, wondering where on earth this woman could have gone had she been real. Even if she had somehow opened that door, she couldn't have done that that quickly. There was only a two-second gap for her to do it before I turned around and even with that time, she still couldn't have reached the top of the stairs. Plus, the door is huge. It's a double door that's really big and heavy and has two locks on it. So, there was no way she could have gone through that door. I ran down the stairs to see if the lady had changed her mind and carried on walking, but she was nowhere to be seen. At this point, me and my mother are in disbelief. We had just seen a lady who then practically evaporated into thin air. I didn't even have to describe the lady to my mom. She told me her appearance perfectly. I knew from this she couldn't have copied me as I had said barely anything. We ran around to the front door of the library and burst in like a pair of excited children. We didn't even say hello to our favorite staff. 
We just jumped right into conversation with them about what had just happened. They found it super weird and they were intrigued. They confirmed the back door was never used and there were not any more staff members scheduled for that day anyway. Needless to say that our staff friends were very excited about this encounter, but they then refused to walk in the back of the library where the other side of that door was for the rest of the day. On another note, the back of the library is for staff members only. A majority of staff have reported that there are strange going ons in that area, like footsteps and things going missing, only to appear back in that place that it was thought that they originally were. After discussing this incident right there, not me, my mom, or any of the staff could explain what had happened. We were just very excited at the fact that me and my mom had literally seen a ghost, and we wanted it to happen again. After we finally left the library, we walked back to that back door to get to our car. We did do a small investigation which involved taking some pictures to see if anything spooky showed up, but we haven't analyzed the images yet. Overall, I'd say I'm quite confused as to why a ghost would show itself to me and my mother at 2 in the afternoon, but I feel privileged that it decided to. The thing you need to know for this particular event to make sense is that long ago when the doctors gave my mother three months to live, two things happened simultaneously. She made up in her mind to make them out to be liars, and she became very obsessed with her songs. Referring to them as her songs did not mean she wrote them or have any legal claim to them. They were just songs you never heard anyone else sing anymore since many predated radio even. Some were jaunty little ditties, other ballads, and some were plain silly but fun to sing, and some were almost operatic. Most were in English, but a few were in Gaelic. As she grew weaker, she became convinced that with her passing, the songs would die too, as no one would remember them, even though us kids had heard them our entire lives. I'm one of eight kids. Why she decided I was the one that had to learn them all is beyond me. The others were quite musical, as were our parents. They all had that gift that brings life into music, so that it transcends being just notes and rhythm. My three sisters were all sopranos, like my mother, and three of my boys tenors. My oldest brother had real range though. He could either hit notes that belonged in the basement, or soar as high as any soprano. Me? Well... I was best at low alto, which paled so much by comparison I may as well have sung in the key of Z. Still, it was me mom wanted to teach them to, and if that's what she wanted, that's what was going to happen, and so I sung. On days mom felt up to it, we had duets, and if it was a really good day, she'd accompany us on the piano. On bad days, when there was just too much pain, she'd have me sit by her bed and sing, telling me when I missed a note or didn't get a word exactly right. It was all so very important to her, which made it important to me. My mom made it past the three months, and although she never got better, she simply refused to let go just yet, or to let me stop singing. Even after I left home at 16 and would manage to call her from a payphone, she'd ask me to sing her this song or that. Funny thing about that, there I'd be standing there using a wall-mounted payphone, one without a booth, singing to her, usually with tears creeping down my cheeks, and almost without fail, someone would tip me. Never a lot, but a coin or two that would let me talk a few minutes more. Poor mama in those pre-collar ID days had no clue her little girl was living on the streets. She thought I was living with a friend. A lie spun by my father that I allowed to stand. Sometimes lies need to be, but enough with that. Mama passed away in 1986. By then I was married with a son and another baby on the way. I wasn't even showing yet. I had managed to forge an uneasy alliance with my father over the decades, just so I could see my mom in the last years of her life. And whenever we would visit, that woman would have me sing a song or two, her pick. I always felt a bit like I was taking a pop quiz. But no one was more shocked than I when at her funeral, 
my dad asked me to sing for her one last time, as he always referred to my attempts as necessary noise that made my mother happy. I sang Oh Danny Boy, the way she taught me to, not out of fear that it would be forgotten, but because it was my father's favorite song, and when they were courting, she had learned the Irish words as a surprise for him. He sang it only in English, unable to roll his R's or affect his brogue. But as her illness took hold, she could no longer sustain the notes, and so it had been a very long time since it had been heard in the family. She had thought that perhaps, after she had gone, it might be a reminder from my father that he had and always would be loved by her if I would just sing it once in a while when around him. When he asked, I thought I heard my mom tell me to sing that song. I'd almost swear I did. Perhaps a trick of the wind, or my emotions playing up accented by the other's grief. I began to sing, and I closed my eyes, as everyone began to stare at me. I could hear my mother's high, clear soprano, as it was before the illness, encouraging my voice to soar with hers, rounding out the notes I could never quite reach before. When I finished, those who were staring before were murmuring, whispering to each other, Did you see that? Or, My God, she sounded like her mother. My father would just not stop staring at me in my direction. At the reception, I finally worked up my nerve and asked my older sisters, the twins, See what? I have no explanation for their answer, but they swore they saw my mama standing next to me, singing right along.